action. Hello, this is Captain Sweep of Planetary Guardians, and this is media team number three of the training <laughs> sessions starting right now. And a little bit of context, there's two other teams and the teams know each other and they sort of self-organize together. This is the first team of having four independent people come together into this media training program. And so to start it off, I'd like to hear from each of you, give me your name and uh, just a little bit about where you're at right now in your life and your primary intention given what you know right now uh, what is occurring. So uh, would you like to start, Lindsay? Um, sorry, somebody, gosh, my, my name and then what were the other points? Uh, just kind of like a little bit where you're at in your life right now and then what is your primary intention towards uh, this experience you're about to enter into? Okay, uh, well, my name is Lindsay Rose Hennifer. Um, where I'm at in my life is feeling um, on, a, a, on the positive side of it um, and that things have taken, um, turned a new leaf that I've tried to do for a really long time. Um, a lot of factors that have seemed to be hard to reach have kind of finally settled into my life and gained traction. Um, really good forms of direction um, that I've gained um, and kind of like loss of direction that I've had for a really long time and without getting into it too deeply um, yeah I feel like everything is starting to go more in a positive spin which is really great um, lots of satisfaction and completion and uh, my intention from this is to be able to learn more of these maps. <laughs> it's been a long intention for a long time. So just to absorb as much of the information as possible um, as of right now. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, yeah. Michelle? All right. Hi, yeah, as you know, my name's Michelle. Um, well, lately I've just noticed like very rapidly all of many of my perspectives on the way I perceive the external world changing very fast. So it's definitely a transition period for me. And yeah, yeah, just a lot of patience lately for me. I'm just kind of in the middle grounds of deciding what I want to bring into this new perspective that I've gained. So uh, I would love to just learn about this very secret plan. I've heard about it for quite a while now. And I'm very, very curious. And I also, I used the cards at the uh, authentic self party with a group of people and they were really, really special to see what they can do. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Matthew? My name is Matthew. I live in um, Victoria, BC. I moved out here five years ago from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I definitely am here to get, uh, well, I have the same goal as Elijah, or a similar goal of, of turning the economy into a love economy, and that was clear in your intro video, so that alone is enough to be here. On top of that, I do love communication, business, collaboration, and I could go on, so there's many reasons to be here. And what do I want to get out of it is to make sure everyone gets out of it what they want to get out of it. So seeing us as a unit, we're a team, and, and, and thinking like that and playing, playing the game like that. That's what I want to get out of this. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Daniel? Hi, I'm Daniel Siddiqui. I moved to New York about three years ago, having spent uh, my life prior to that in the UK. I have spent a lot of time um, on personal development, learning different ways to the world, uh, different ways to think, um, focusing more on mindfulness, um, just generally learning different perspectives on the world. And I, I like learning, uh, and more and more I like hearing new perspectives on things. And uh, a mutual friend, uh, Elijah Sabrina recommended that I 
participate. Uh, it sounds like you guys all know a lot more about this than I do. I know nothing other than it's going to be a, a new experience uh, and hopefully a new perspective. And I like meeting new uh, smart people. And that's about the, uh, the size of my intention, fairly broad. All right, thank you very much. So I'll give a little bit of an intro to what we're about to do. And you're here essentially to learn the inflow matrix operating system. And the inflow matrix operating system is a primary reference point to organize any job, any organization, and or any community. And then all the parts that are using it can then have a shared reference point in language for how to do commerce together. So it's, it's a blueprint to create a shared knowledge community. And that shared knowledge community eventually has 144 people. And that shared knowledge community is a cell in the new paradigm as opposed to the corporation, which is a cell in the old paradigm. So this media team is the first unit to come together. And when there's five media teams, you have like a superhero team of 20 people. And then you have seven superhero teams plus a founding team of four to create a shared knowledge community of 144. So the very secret plan is bringing people together into a new economic structure and figuring out how to design your ideal job within that structure and to assist everyone in the structure to find their right place and to create their right lifestyle and to all work together in a cooperative manner that isn't there just to give you a job to reach some mission that no one is really aligned with because it's something someone else decided. So your gifts are the primary reference point for what we're looking at. And the inflow matrix is basically a set of maps. And I've learned over the years that with cognitive maps, it's almost like there's this big cognitive landscape called the newosphere. And our minds organize it with conceptual maps. And a map like, let's say, Ma Maslow's hierarchy of needs is different than, let's say, the seven chakras, which is different from, let's say, the seven habits of highly effective people. And there's many and many, many, many models out there in different spiritual traditions and different business concepts that are all unintegrated. They're not connected into one whole system. And so what the inflow matrix is, is a one whole infrastructure with a methodology to integrate all these different parts together, whatever you wish to put together. But first you have to get the general framework. And the first map of the many maps which can go into it is called the five communication spaces map. And I find that as a first map, almost imagine you have like a conceptual third eye, this is the first map you're using to organize all the other maps. And if you get a pen and piece of paper, we're going to draw your first map. And the exercise we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to program fields. Spaces can be programmed by your values and that is what we're gonna to do today in a very unique way. So draw on your map a big circle and then draw a circle in the middle of it, maybe like a three inch circle in the middle, an eight inch circle around it, and then draw a cross without going through the mid circle. So you're gonna divide the circle into four parts and you're gonna have a, a circle in the middle which is the center part. And when you're finished that, give me a wink. Could you recite it, recite it again quickly there, Elijah? Okay, so you've got an eight inch circle and you've got a three inch circle in the middle. And then, yeah, if you can see that, and then you draw a line across and the line, vertical line and a horizontal line, but don't go through the middle circle. So you're dividing the big circle into four parts, four quadrants. Now, once you've done that on the top right, write in personal space. And then right below that, write one-on-one -on -one space in the bottom right. And then on the bottom left, write community space. And then on the top, 
left, put group space. And then in the middle, write sacred space. So these five spaces I'm suggesting are the primary communication spaces for humans. The first one, the personal space, is just you. Nobody else, your personal space. The one-on-one -on -one space is when you're talking just with one other human being. Just one person, two people, one-on-one -on -one space. Then there's group space, which we're in right now. That's anything more than two is group space that has some sort of boundary or a reason that that group is together. And then we have the community space, which is the larger space for all of us to meet in. The middle space is the sacred space, is the uh, ability to bring in spirit, higher power, creator, God, whatever name you want to give, whatever that you believe in. But the sacred space kind of is like this very general space. We don't really have to, let's say, argue about the terminology. It just creates this acceptance or acknowledgement that there is a spiritual connection into whatever we're doing. And so that's part of what is part of this is that uh, the, the sacredness of life has been kept away from business and kept away from everything, and that needs to return. And so in the fundamental beginning, we have just you, you and somebody else, you as a group, you as a larger community, and then the connection to whatever you want to consider spirit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a very unique way of creating a value system of programming each field, each space with one value that then creates this beginning of a field of realization for you. So I want you to get five pieces of paper and cut them, cut them up or rip them up or whatever. You need five little pieces of paper. And what I want you to do is I want you to write on the five pieces of paper the five highest values that you want to learn right now. If you were creating your code of honor and you had to choose five values, now you may, let's say you're a very honest person and you value honesty, but you go, you know what? I need to learn commitment or I need to learn clarity or I need to learn wisdom. This is kind of like a, a place for you to start a new or to bring something in that you, you may know that you need. So you could create five values you already have that are part of your life that you're already living it. Make it conscious and, and make it very solid in this. Or you could choose values that you want more of. You might, you want, you might want more love, or you might want more pleasure, or you might want more commitment, or you might want more self-discipline, or you might want more joy. And then and think of these spaces and think, okay, well, what do I want in, in my community? You know, what do I want in, in a group? What do I want in the sacred space? What do I want for just me? And what do I want for the one-on-one? -on -one? Just to be clear, Elijah, are we picking one new value for each space? No, right now, we're not going to actually assign the value to the space. I'm going to give you a methodology to do that. So right now, just five values. You can, you can keep in mind that these spaces are there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can do it two ways. Look at the spaces and try to pick one or just come up with the five that you go, okay, I have, I have to have these in my life right now. Okay.
How are we doing? I got four out of five. Lindsay's done. Well, and Michelle's still working on it. Okay, done. Everyone finished? Yep. Michelle, okay, Lindsay, okay. So now we're gonna have two ways that you can do this. You can look at the values and you can specifically place them consciously on each one where you think it needs to go. Or you can turn the pieces of paper over, ruffle them around a bit so you don't know where they go, and then you can place the unknown ones on each one and then turn it over and do it with randomness. And what I found is over the years that this, the, the random method is, is a beautiful, brilliant way that people love because it does take conscious choice out and creates a pattern that you might never put. But once you see it, it kind of makes sense. So it's up to you. There's conscious choice and then there's random. So do that right now. So has everyone done that? No. Okay, so who wants to be the first to go to tell us what you got? I'll go. Okay, Daniil. So, sorry, just one question. Was I, uh, it didn't matter if I put one in each space? Do they have to be equally distributed or, or no? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you can do multiples, but for now, just one in each space. Okay, uh, I'll make an adjustment then. Okay, um, so I went the path of things that I would like more of in my life rather than overall you know, principles. So I started with contentment that I put in personal. I put love in one-to-one. -one. I put belonging in group. I put purpose in community and joy in sacred. Nice. And, and how does that feel to see that and to have that? That'd be great. <laughs> do, do, you, do you believe it's possible? Oh, sure. Anything's possible. <laughs> well, if you have the right map, it sure does help. That's great. That's a, that's a great value system in my mind. Um, who, who wants to go next? Matthew. I'm glad you went, Daniil. Is that how you say your name? Yes. It is. Yeah, see, I struggle because I'm always the guy who puts his hand up first, and I really want to make sure other people take on that habit. And so I'm so glad you did that. Uh, so I took your advice, Elijah, which is go random, even though I built my five on thinking I know where they would go. But I decided let's play the game. So uh, what came up, the only one that landed where I predicted it should go is the value of volume in community space. Now volume to me is like I'm a musician, so it means turning up the volume knob, more of, you know, being bigger. So community space got volume. Group space ended up with joy, which I might move because I really want that to be in my personal space. But I've got presence in personal space, and that's okay too. But I might switch those by the end of the hour here. Um, and then I got the word devotion ended up in one-on-one -on -one space. And I think that's kind of neat. So that's what showed up. And the sacred space? Leadership. Oh, nice. And how does it feel to see that? Uh, it makes me nervous. Uh, a little perplexed. Can't wrap my head around all of it, but some of it I can. And I like that challenge. I think it's a good thing.
I might change it, but I think it's a good thing. Matthew, which boxes did you intend each of those values to go in when you wrote them? Yeah, okay. Well, in a sacred space, I wanted devotion. And in personal space, I wanted joy. And I wanted um, leadership in group space, in the one-on-one -on -one space to have presence. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, who's next? Lindsay? <laughs> or maybe Michelle? Michelle, yeah. if you want to go first, go ahead. Sure. <laughs> um, okay, so in I just wrote five values without thinking about it, and then I did play the random game as well. And I really like how it turned out, I think. Kind of makes a lot of sense for me. Um, personal space was truth and clarity. It's really important for me that what I'm witnessing is not merely a projection of the mental patterns that I've created throughout this life. So I, I like to see truth at like a very fundamental layer. So that was a personal space that ended up there. One-on-one -on -one space was uh, internal expression, like maybe authentic expression is probably a better way to say it. Uh, community space came up with love which you also did too, Danielle. And then group space was courage. Just, um, yeah, that could mean a lot of things. <laughs> and then sacred space was contentment. Awesome. And how does it feel to see that? Yeah, personally, I'm making a lot of connections in my mind. It feels good to see it, like all, uh, I love leaving things up to chance as well. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. And Lindsay. Um, so my sacred space was deeper understanding. Um, all of mine for the values that I chose were based on my um, highest values that I would like or that I have right now placed in my life. I had two extra ones that I did on the side um, that didn't end up making it into the thing. Um, and I can read those after if you guys are interested. Um, sacred space was deeper understanding. Um, I think that that's pretty accurate. I have no sacred space. One that I would consider as a sacred space or connection to, I think, anything as of now. Um, personal space is connection with self and others. Um, I would say that's very accurate and the best spot that I could have gone to um, trying to be able to reconnect with myself. So there's been a huge disassociation for a long time. So it was really good and exactly the path that I'm onto. So incredibly accurate. Um, I chose the values. I turned them upside down and then I just placed them randomly. Um, that was the method methodology that I used. One-on-one -on -one space was awareness. I think that's, my interpretation of that would be I'm using one-on-one -on -one space and interactions with other people to gain awareness into my own life um, through gaining awareness of other people. Community space was is stability. Um, makes a lot of sense. I move around a lot. Um, so being able to have some kind of community space or environment um, that's very stable um, would be highly beneficial in my life. Um, group space was joy. I think quite ex self-explanatory who doesn't like to have joy when you're with groups of people for sure and, and yeah. how does it how does it feel to see that map it feels great um yeah yeah especially like the four out of the five i think the group space for um for the joy is sort of um it's like less of a connection, even though it's maybe like the happiest one, but all the other ones I think um, are very accurate to what's happening in my life right now. That feels good. Okay. Um, we're going to have to do sort of part one and two because I, I don't have the upgraded version yet. And we're going to stop at some point within about seven minutes, just so you know. Um, okay. What I'd like you to do is give a round now, each of you to sort of say, what kind of values work have you done? and how much focus of attention have you placed on value so far in your life and what kind of methodology of putting them together into some whole system have you used 
if, if, if anything. So, uh, Daniil, would you like to start on that? About six years ago, I started to write uh, kind of the, the, the essence of things that I learned at that point in my life uh, for two purposes. One, I, I kind of wanted it documented and, and to be able to hand it to people, whether it be children or a partner, and say, this is what I believe. And every five years or so to revisit that and see what else I'd learned, what had changed, how my thinking had evolved. Uh, one of the things that I wrote about in there, uh, I don't know if anyone is familiar with this, but there's, there's uh, a shape called a Penrose triangle. Uh, it, it doesn't exist, it can't exist, at least not in three dimensions, um, because the, the corners of the triangle can't connect. If, if you Google Penrose triangle, you'll, you'll get an image of it. Um, and what I'd written at the time was that if you look at your values and you look at what you believe in different areas of your life, you may find that while they are consistent in that area, if you look at other areas of your life, they're inconsistent. And, and that's why I had this Penrose triangle. Because if you look at either of the three corners or any of the three corners, they're fine. But you look at the thing in, in totality and go, this can't work because there's incongruity. Um, what I've realized since then is that I don't think you need congruity. I think you can have simultaneous uh, beliefs that don't fit together, and that's okay. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Matthew? Nothing, except I've got a few, and I've put them on paper, but I haven't, you know, created the mecca of my values and then trodden the path via map. So I'm ready for that if that's what I'm on here. <laughs> Anything more to say about your value uh, exploration over the last few years? Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, I always doubted the word values. I thought it was just like a cheap word to throw around. Like, what do you value? But but now I'm, I, I have a sense of it. In fact, I'm in love with giving value. Offering value is a personality trait I have. Uh, in fact, to a fault sometimes. But anyways, um, yeah, so... Okay, here, I'll put it this way. So growing up, becoming a teenager and an adult, um, as I studied Eastern philosophy, Buddhism, and whatever else I ended up studying in life, I found that um, virtues was my favorite word. And I always loved virtues. And so I like developing good virtue or having virtues. And so that's the word that I always use. And that's why when I saw values, I was like, no, that's a, that's a North American slang word for virtues. And so that's kind of my, my grip on it all. Okay. I get that. Uh, Michelle? Hmm. Well, <laughs> um, I come from a place just within the last few years from going of like zero sense of like self-trust or self-understanding or regulation so for me one of my top values is emotional intelligence it's really really important to me and uh, integrity as well so being sound or whole or maybe realizing that you are sound or whole so those are two of my most important things to me and uh, I do a lot of journaling I do I do draw maps of my own I haven't done many but I just started and yeah I use different like little techniques to try to piece puzzles together but yeah <laughs> thank you uh, Lindsay <laughs> um I would say that mine is a bit of a longer journey um I worked with a woman named Lorianne for a number of years um we did a um, she worked on a values map system and she focused around our relationships and communication. Um, it was, I, I guess, a, like it was a branch from Elijah's. It was connected in some way, shape or form, but then was also her um, independent thing. Um, and I worked with her for a number of years. I've got a couple of different maps um, from hers and um, maps that I've worked with hers. and been a long time since I've looked at those, but they're still sitting in folders and uh, in my 
parents in our room in my parents in my parents house somewhere um and as of like lately in my life because that was a number of years ago uh, maybe five or six years ago and we all worked together um in a group with my with a couple other people um for maybe four or five years and um had some workshops and things but in the last couple years i've not done anything um specifically based within values okay okay so we're just coming to the end of this part um, i'm going to end this and then re-invite you and we'll start part two okay so thank you very much for everyone watching this is the end of part one